Hi, this is uh, Rachel Smith, and I'm going to show you really briefly how to create a Flipgrid account and then how to create a grid for your students to use. So Flipgrid uses the universal Google login. Um, I already have I already have an account, so I'm going to log in by clicking Educator Login. But if you go to Educator Sign Up, um, you'll sign up with Google, and um, it'll just walk you through walk you through the steps. So when I click Sign In with Google, it'll probably just take me to my account, which already exists. And uh, Flipgrid is free, which is one of the reasons why I use it. Um, They've said it's going to be free forever per their contract with Microsoft, but um, it's at least free now. So, um, so now I've logged into Flipgrid, so what can you do? Well, um, I'm going to create a new grid, and then I'll show you an example of um, student work that's already done. So I'm going to call this uh, my test grid. And um, there's three ways that you can have students log in. Um, you can create IDs for your students, which puts, really puts the burden on you. You can make your Flipgrid public, which um, you may or may not want to do um, because you have little control over who joins your grid. Um, we can do uh, what I did, <laughs> which is um, allow students to join through their school email. That limits access to just students who have an OCPS.net uh, email. Um, Right, so school emails at ocps.net. I'm going to hit next. You can also, um, there's, there's also an option to customize the name of your grid if you want to. I just, it generated Smith8737, which is fine. Um, and then what you can do, you can hit copy and then you can um, include a link to this on Canvas. It also, um, it syncs with, um, with Remind, so you can copy a link to Remind if you use that. Um, or here where it says copy embed code, if you want like a little embedded uh, link in, um, in a, a tweet or on Canvas, you can do that as well. All right, so I'm going to go to my new grid. And um, over here where it says add a uh, copilot, if you want to collaborate with another teacher and share a grid, you just have to enter um, their email address, their ocps.net email address, and invite them. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is create a topic. So in any Flipgrid, you can have multiple different topics. So you can have a different Flipgrid for each class, or you could have a Flipgrid for each class type. So like if you teach, say, US history and world history, you could have one grid for US in all of your sections of US and one grid for world in all of your sections for world. Or you could have a different grid for each class section, like first period, second period, third period. And then um, within each grid, you can have multiple different topics, um, as many as you want. So I'm going to add a new topic. I'm going to call it um, Welcome to Flipgrid. And then this is what's really nice because um, you, uh, you may want to limit the amount of time that you're spending in class doing Flipgrid or um, the, the amount of time that students are spending at home creating a video. Or maybe you want their video to be a certain minimum length versus um, a maximum length. So um, you can set the maximum recording time up to five minutes. Um, I have my students usually do um, at most 90 second videos um, because if, we, if we're going to watch the videos in class, um, I don't always want to spend, um, you know, five minutes per video. Uh, also, the quality starts to, to grade a little while <laughs> when you start adding time. Um, so over here, you can include a prompt and that prompt can be whatever you want. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to, it could be, uh, you can include a stimulus, you can ins include a link, it could be a question, it could be a discussion question. So I'm going to say, how are you going to use Flipgrid in your classroom? It's a maximum character length of 500 characters. Um, and then you can also embed another resource. Um, and then uh, you, can, you can embed a Nearpod, a Kahoot. There's all these options down here. 
Um, you can record your own video and then embed it in the Flipgrid. Um, so they watch your video and then respond to it. Or you can upload an image um, just by clicking these links. Uh, YouTube video. All right, so I'm going to create my topic. So now I want to share this with my students. Um, same thing, it integrates with Google Classroom, which we don't use anymore. Um, you can get an embed code to post onto Canvas. You can share it on Remind or just copy the link and then post it to, um, to Canvas or uh, you can just post a copy of the link on the board and the students can follow it. And then from your end, that's pretty much it. Um, so uh, there are some options over here on the right hand side and this will apply to the whole um, or rather will apply to the topic, not the whole grid. Um, so you can edit the topic. So if you don't like the prompt, you can change something or add a stimulus. You can record your own response. Um, you can, uh, the Disco library is like the discovery library. So if you want to add your grid to um, their public library for other people to find, you can do that. Um, and then you can move your topic uh, to a different grid or you can duplicate your topic. So like if you have a grid for each class section, you can um, duplicate your topic to each section. So you don't have to create a new topic um, for all seven class periods. All right, so, um, so now you know how to create a Flipgrid. And by the way, the students will fully understand how to record uh, their videos because it works a lot like Snapchat. <laughs> um, so the, the last problem you're going to have is, uh, is the students not understanding how to use it. There's a big green button. Um, that uh, you really can't miss. So um, let me show you what some of my students have done. So uh, this was from my um, AP US government class. I had them do, a, a, well, I had them do a few things here. We'll take a look at their unit four review where they, um, where they recorded uh, little review videos and had to uh, record responses to each other. Um, and you'll see here, this is active, so students could continue to post since this is from last year, I'm going to hide it um, so that students can't discover it um, and they can't post to it. All right, so uh, their prompt was right here, post a video summarizing the most important concepts for unit four. And then here were their videos. So I'm gonna play one of these videos. All right, so um, you'll see here there's also a built-in rubric, um, so uh, which makes grading really easy. If you want, you can edit the rubric by clicking on this link, um, and you can you can provide other feedback right onto uh, the Flipgrid, uh, um, right onto Flipgrid. Um, also, you can feature student uh, student videos. Let me pause that. So. Um, you can add a star to feature the video if you want other students to watch it, if you think it's a good example. Um, you can uh, spark the video, which creates a new topic. So instead of having to create a new topic from scratch, if you spark the video, it creates a new topic automatically, and then the students um, in your class have to respond to that video. Um, and you can also add the response to a mixtape. So a mixtape is where you can feature multiple student videos from different grids and different topics that you think are standouts um, that students can look at as examples of exemplary student work. Um, also, you see there's a little heart. So you can click that to show that you love the video. Other students can also um, add that feedback. Um, you can also generate a link. Let me actually pull that up again. You can uh, generate a link where it says share directly to the student video. Um, you can copy that link and then you can post that to Canvas or Remind or wherever you want if you want um, students to go directly to that video. Um, so that's, that's about it. That's all there is to Flipgrid. The students really, really um, love it. They're engaged um, and uh, you're ready to record your first, uh, your first grade.